Um, so, um, good morning, guys. I'm Junfei Zhang, and uh, I'm from the University of Melbourne, but I'm currently in my exchange to the University of Copenhagen, and I'm going to present to you my research, which is machine learning prediction of the computed band gaps of double perovskite materials. And um, some facts about me. So I'm currently in my second year of Bachelor of Science, and my major is Computing and Software Systems at the University of Melbourne. And my research interest includes machine learning, AI, and virtual reality. So if you have any um, opportunities, feel free to email me. And the organization of my presentation is going to be uh, according to those parts. So I'll first introduce some very important concepts, and then I will explain like the motivation for this research. And then I will explain what is the research and also uh, why is it significant and how can it be improved and followed by a summary. So, <clears throat> excuse me. The first concept that I'm going to review is quantum state. So in quantum mechanics, the energy of the bound electrons be becomes quantized and electrons at the ground state can be excited to higher energy levels by absorbing photons. So um, the left-hand side is the electronic configurations and the right-hand side is the order that the electrons uh, must be filled, which I believe is according to the off-ball principle. And um, it is related to the band gap, which is the most important concept in this research. Um, so as you can see from the left-hand side, um, the valence band, which is the outermost shell of the atom, um, the electrons are very loose, and the conduction band holds the electrons when they are energized, making them conduct conductive. Um, electrons cannot exist between those two bands. So the band gap is just the energy gap between those two bands. And it, it is also the energy um, that the electrons needs to cross in order to move from one shell to another. Um, so band gap is uh, very interesting because it determines whether the material is conductive or not. So as you can see, the metals, um, they have a very like overlapping band gap. So which means that the electrons are very easy to travel from the valence band to the conduction band. So they are very good conductors. While semi-conductors, uh, for example, germanium, their energy gap is relatively larger. However, when provided with sufficient energy, the electrons can travel from the valence band to the conduction band. Um, however, on the other hand, the insulators, their like energy gap is so large that no amount of energy can make the electrons travel. So we can see that band gaps are a very essential characteristic. Um, and then that brings us to the density functional theory. We all know that the <clears throat> Schrodinger equation, uh, which is the Hamiltonian times the wave function, um, equals E times psi. So it is like a very um, complicated equation. However, it can be simplified by using the electronic Hamiltonian. So it is by the born oppenheimer approximation of the Hamiltonian, which gets much simpler if we only focus on the electronic part of the equation. However, it is very hard to find the electronic wave function because the electron-electron interaction of the electronic Hamiltonian is very difficult to solve. It is a many-body problem where all the electrons must be simultaneously considered. Um, so the density functional theory is essentially a simplified process of finding the solutions to the Schrodinger equation using the electron density. It is based on the uh, hohenberg kahn theorem, which states that the ground state energy from the Schrodinger equation is a unique functional of the density of the electron density. And the functional takes a function as input and out outputs a number. So um, the complete uh, energy functional has two parts. And um, the first one is the unknown part. And the second one is the exchange correlation. That part involves all the quantum mechanic effects that does not include, uh, that are not included in the null terms. Um, so taking the advantage of this theorem, we, um, the problem of 
finding the solution to the Schrodinger equation is reduced to a much simpler problem. Um, so some characteristics of the density functional theory includes that it is first principles and it is theoretically valid for the ground state only and it must be solved iteratively using the Consham equation on the left hand side and all the quantum mechanical interactions are entailed in the exchange correlation functional however the exact form of the exchange correlation is unknown which brings the limitations of the DFT. So first of all, it is formally valid for ground state properties only. And secondly, and the most importantly, the exact form of the exchange correlation is unknown. However, there are many approximations such as the LDA and the GGA, but they all have some problems. For example, the GGA has problems describing the insulators and the van der Waals interactions. So as a result, the conventional DFT severely underestimates the band gaps by about 40%, as you can see from the right-hand side graph, which is not good. So we need an alternative strategy for band gap prediction, and that makes us think, uh, think of the machine learning. There are actually many, um, many recent research uh, topics that use machine learning to predict the band gap of different materials. For example, the topo-wise graph neural networks. It is um, automatically generate crystal representation using crystal structures and to include the crystal level properties as an input feature. And um, in that research, they predict the band gap of a crystalline compound. Uh, and the result is shown to have higher accuracy than the standard DFT. And also we have the alternating conditional expectations. Uh, in that research, they use a data set of a single pair of sky materials. And the result is also very comparable to like using the DFT only. And uh, we also have the kernel ridge regression that is usually used for the prediction of the band gap of organic crystal structures. So we can see that using machine learning method to predict the band gap of different materials is becoming a very trendy research topic. Uh, so our study, we chose to use a data set of GLBSC computed band gaps of 1,306 double perovskites. And I will explain like why we choose this material uh, next. And the model that we decided to use is random forest regression because it is very well suited in capturing the nonlinearity as seen across the band gap and the extracted physical features, such as the highest occupied energy level. Um, double perovskite is a very uh, useful material. So it has a general formula of A, A prime, B, B prime, X, six, where A stands for the the earth metal and B stands for the transition metals. Uh, so it has a very stable crystal structure, a very unique electromagnetic properties, and a very uh, and a high catalytic activities, which uh, makes it to have the potential as functional materials for many fields, including environmental protection and the chemical industry, and also as catalysis. So the engineering in those fields require a proper description of the underlying electronic structure of the double perovskites, which attests to the significance of choosing this uh, material as our data set. And the current um, data of this material is very limited based on our understanding. So as for the features, we use 20 atomic features that are obtained from the Pymogen Python materials genomics package, uh, and it is a open source Python package. So those are the 20 atomic features. Um, and uh, the algorithm workflow is uh, according to this chart. So we first have a sample set and we split it to different training sets and um, which generates a bunch of trees and a forest. 
So for each tree, uh, we choose the variable first, and then we sample the data and sort it according to the variable importance scores, and we get the Gini index. And in the end, uh, the best split is determined. And the overall prediction is the average of the all the tree predictions. And the cost of this algorithm is in order of n tree, which is the number of estimators, and m tri, which is the number of variables to sample at each node, and also uh, n times log n, where n is the number of records. Um, so we decided to use 700 estimators because we saw that the number of estimators, like the accuracy, first arises and then decreases after 700, which we believe is due to overfitting. Um, and then uh, the right-hand side shows a parity plot of the predicted versus the computed band gaps using all 20 physical descriptors. Um, so then we got the uh, like the important score of the features. And those are very interesting because it can actually be interpreted physically. So the top one feature is Spock modulus. It is the elastic property of a solid or fluid under pressure and um, specifically its resistance to compression. So um, since it depends on the compressibility of the atoms, uh, which affects the extent of the overlap of the valence atomic orbitals and therefore affects the band gap of the material. And the second uh, top two is superconductivity. So uh, we know that it is the state of the matter where like no electrical resistance and magnetic penetrability. So um, the magnitude of the band gap determines the electrical conductivity and um, therefore a material with relatively small band gap is expected to uh, more easily achieve a superconducting state. So that makes sense as well. And the third one is electronegativity. So it is like the ability of the atom to attract an electron pair in like a chemical bond. And um, larger elemental electronegativity difference results in larger degree of electron localization around the more negative um, element, which makes it harder for electrons to leap to the conduction band. But however, we do not infer any causal relationships. Those are only interpretations and require further investigations. So um, comparing with like previous literatures, which normally trained using five to 10 atomic features, our result is uh, very like unique in the sense that we do use a total of 20 atomic features to have a more comprehensive result. And then the dimension is reduced to 10 features for the optimal performance model. Um, so uh, the optimal model of our um, study uses 700 estimators using a top 10 features only and uses a 25-75 testing and training ratio. So the bottom left graph shows the um, parity plot of the optimal model and the right hand side is a comparison of our model with um, other research like the ones that I've just mentioned and we can see that um, the results are very comparable because we got an um, accuracy of 85.6% and we also have a MAE of 0.46 and an RMSC of 0.64. Um, so um, the study is uh, a successful because we retain the fidelity to the FT and our result is also physically interpretable and um, it provides some insights to the band gaps of double perovskite materials um, because the current information of double perovskite is very limited. And so the most importantly, this research attests to the potential of machine learning regressions for the rapid screening of promising candidate functional materials. 
Um, however, we still have some limitations. For example, the sample size is not uh, very big because um, like the sample size for double perovskite is uh, very limited and that's the best that we can find. And secondly, the missing values are filled by the mean value of the feature, which uh, we believe can be experimented about. And thirdly, we lack a more interpretable understanding of the random forest regression in statistical learning theory. It's like we lack a step-by-step -step interpret interpretability. So um, how this can be improved is to use a larger data sets and um, can experiment with like various methods to deal with the missing values and also can um, be developed to use interpretability tools such as the RF visualization toolkit for like a decision path view for a better understanding of the results. Um, so in summary, the DFT theory is very computationally costly and is very limited in its accuracy due to the approximation of the exchange correlation functional because it is unknown. Um, so machine learning um, is a viable alternative for the rapid prediction of the materials electronic properties while still retaining reasonable fidelity to the DFT theory. And um, our study uses a random forest regression for the prediction of the band gap of double perovskite compounds. And the top three features we got was spot modulus, superconductivity, and electronegativity. And we got an accuracy of 85.6% and also a RMSE of 0.64 electrovolts. So we highlight the potential of machine learning regression for the rapid and physically interpretable prediction of the electronic properties of functional materials. And um, I want to thanks to the other co-authors of this research. And also, um, this is a reference list if you want to see more about like the other research, relevant research topics, feel free to um, access them through the internet. And we also want to thanks to um, Dr. Lin, who gave us a lot of support in this project. And um, thank you. This is my presentation. If you have any questions, feel free to ask or send me a chat.